Four here, Rip Curl WSL Finals, Brazilian flag supporting the defending world champ Felipe Toledo as he is coming up against Ethan Ewing in this heat one of the best of three title match. This is one to really put the focus on. This is the end of the year. This is the finish line. Ethan Ewing with an inspirational performance so far here at the WSL Finals. Let's see if he can continue on with that performance against Felipe Toledo. This is going to be our first view at Felipe Toledo and his surfing. Horn sounded, 35 minutes on the clock. Clock ticking down. I'm Kai Guerrero along with Peter Mel and former event winner Richie Lovett here. And I'm so excited about this, Rich. <laughs> yeah, this is amazing, this matchup. Uh, Number 77 against number 33, and uh, Australia versus Brazil, and you kind of get the feeling that uh, all the Brazilian fans have kind of pushed the uh, the Colo Pinto fans off to the side, going, come on, give us some space here, let's go. So, uh, you know, I saw Felipe in the competitors area not too long ago, uh, looked really relaxed and happy, so, you know, he, he's, uh, I mean, obviously he's coming in with all the confidence in the world. He's going to be hard to stop, but the form that Ethan Ewing has delivered today, he's going to match him. Yeah, and you think about uh, his experience in this WSL Finals format. He he's understands what he needs to do in order to have the sustained energy to be able to produce big numbers right now in this situation. I mean, he's coming in as number two seed, and now he's number one seed, so it's uh, the place he wants to be, definitely. And uh, But he has had to watch Ethan's form. So at that point, you're kind of like, okay, Let's bring something different to the table, Felipe. Hint, hint. Let's go to over the lip. Peter, yeah. can I go into some numerics for you? Numerics. Yeah. On the uh, jersey number for Felipe Toledo is 77. Felipe wanted number seven, which is Mick Fanning's number. So Felipe said, hey, I'm going to double that, do 77, which is also a biblical number. Mick Fanning is in the corner of Ethan Ewing here <laughs> at Lower Trestle. So we're tying it all together numerically. Okay, numerically, and then a little spirituality into that as well. But yeah. uh, hey, I'll tell you what, either way, these two surfers uh, have been probably the two best this season. I mean, go, don't town out Griffin and what he's been able to put together as well. But man, um, Ethan Ewing has been, just to watch the improvement, I guess, is what I'm more or less asking. It's coming through. His, his double E's really improved. The fact that Felipe has been able to come in uh, in a sophomore year, I guess, after a world title. We talked about how hard it is to defend a world Back title. Up, yeah. And he came in firing. Right? It wasn't like he ever won that world title. It's like he wanted another one instantaneously. Yeah, and it, I, I identified there was a mindset as well. You know, there was a change in, in his demeanor. You know, he instantly kind of grew a foot. You know, he was super confident and he was, um, you know, maybe not as accessible to everyone as well, just because he had so much to do. You know, he had so much on the commitments of a world champion. He really had to manage that and get to know it really quickly. And I think he did it very, very well. Um, but yeah, he's backed it up beautifully. Uh, the surfing hasn't hasn't skipped a beat. If anything, it's improved. Here we go. Open priority is going to be Felipe Toledo with a quick start. On his forehand. Sharp on that first turn there. And that's the speed of Toledo. Nice rail work for the second turn. Eases through a cutback into the white water there. Eyeing up this section at the end. Tapered wave, but we know how he can bring the spark, and there's a spark that we expect from Felipe Toledo. Stops the finish. Nice start for Toledo, Pete. You listen to the hint. Hey, that's what we want to see from Felipe specifically. I think actually I want to see it on the first turn um, because that's what he's going to bring a point of difference. He can match Ethan Ewing for sure in the speed of the, of the rail, but ultimately above the lip, that's where he's going to shine. Replay, Rich. Yeah, the replay, just that first stab, just really aggressive. Just setting his intentions. Nice flowing cutback just to reposition himself. Series of smooth arcs all the way through to the inside. And then uh, you knew Felipe was just going to go, OK, I'm going to start rotating. I'm going to take the air. Gets the smooth uh, air rev. And uh, just not even a, a moment where you thought he wasn't going to make it. But this opening maneuver there, super critical. Just well, the whole tail of the board comes free, but does it with so much control. You know, he just it all, never really looks like he's, he's going to fall off. So, uh, you know, a great opening ride for Felipe, and he's setting the tone. Yeah, well, do you think that this wave, potential five, right, compared to what we've seen out there? I mean, this was a, a mid-sized wave. That looked like a five to me, but he probably surfed it up to almost a seven. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, they're going to have to leave some space, aren't they? Because I would think, you know, especially with what we've seen both from both these guys. Well, not Felipe specifically, but what he has the potential to do. I mean, look at that. That's a flared out air reverse. I mean, small section, no worries. 
made it super clean. I mean, all of the th elements that you have to have in an aerial to pull off, he just did that. Yeah. Uh, when we talk about Ethan Ewing, he ha does have a paced approach. Uh, up until now, Ewing has been, been very, has been conserving his energy. Every time he gets up on his board, he's been putting down a score. He's ridden 11 waves so far today. We're watching Felipe Toledo with some fresh legs riding his first wave, Rich. I think the worst thing that Ethan Ewing could do right now is to try and get out of what he's been doing. Get out of the comfort zone and try and change his program against against Felipe. Uh, you know, he's been doing so well with what he's uh, been laying down today. The scores have been gigantic. Uh, if he tries to do something different, he's in danger of maybe getting the rhythm out, you know, and uh, losing that flow that he's got so well this morning. So opening up with a flat seven point ride, pretty straightforward from all the judges for Felipe Toledo. Priority Peter with Ethan Ewing. Ethan did beat Felipe this year uh, that semifinals over at Bells. Yeah, and uh, of course, uh, Ethan you know, went on to end up winning that event. So it was uh, definitely something he wanted to do, at, especially at a place like Bells, you know, after his mom had won it. And uh, to win that event was very special for him. Let's hear from Caroline Marx because Marxy is two good waves away from a world title. She won. Title match number one. Let's hear from Caroline with AJ. Caroline, you have searched with momentum and confidence all day long. One heat down in this best two out of three in the title match. How are you going to keep that mentality, keep that confidence going into the next one? Yeah, I'm just uh, going to you know stick to the plan, keep doing the same thing. And the ways are so fun. I was just telling Luke, I was like, it's so weird. Like in a free surf, you usually be taking anything you can get. And out there, you just get to choose and it's just that's just so cool I'm, I'm just having fun surfing it's it's really fun yeah understandably we'll let you get back to it congratulations thank you, thank you. Ethan Ewing off the bottom again rail control through the entirety of the car aggressive snap there a little punch on the end for Ewing snaps there quickly matching Felipe Toledo's speed so far re-entry for the finish so we'll see what the difference is when we look at the scores, sharp rail work by both surfers. Felipe had the air at the end, Rich, and a more traditional approach by Ethan Ewing for his finish. Yeah, I'd say the outside maneuvers, uh, at, you know, excluding Felipe's first one, you know, Ethan's three maneuvers were stronger. They were strong outside turns, uh, perhaps didn't get the, you know, the finish that Felipe did, but I think it evens it out what the work he did at the start. Don't you think, Pete? Yeah, I would agree. You know, and I think that, uh, again, when you look about our criteria, the right, the elements of the criteria there, stay awesome throughout the entire, you know? every event we have on tour. Uh, you know, when you look at this style, that's the speed power flow, the combination of major maneuvers. He did that, whereas Felipe had the major maneuver, had to cut back, cut back, cut back, and finish with a big major maneuver. Whereas we saw those three turns right there connected in one string, bottom to top, bottom to top. Look at his compression out of his bottom turn and the torque he has on the top. He just gets himself laid out almost horizontally across the lip and extends and goes up and through it, keeps the speed so well. See how he just does a slight little fade here and then just lays into this one. And again, carving through the lip is just so special that he brings the little tweak you had mentioned. He brought that as a little extra element and then straight into another turn, you know, and carrying the speed so well because every turn is major. And uh, again, feels like this could be slightly under the seven, but ultimately it matched it in this exchange in my eyes. Every turn is major. And again, a reminder, Ethan has a broken back right now. <laughs> so there's pain involved. There, there, like, I mean, even with the Red Bull jet ski ride back out. Right, that would be probably the hardest part is yeah. just the bouncing on the back there. I mean, uh, you know, pounding on the spine like that. I mean, again, you think about how can he sustain this type of energy throughout because you know that the pain's gonna be there. I mean, ibuprofen just doesn't fix but that. But Rich, as a, as, a, as a former champ out here and a CT competitor, when does it the adrenaline kick in and, and the pain just disappears because you're in the moment? Well, it, right now is when yeah. it's kicking in. You know, yeah, that yeah, adrenaline is just at the peak right now, you know, and it's, uh, he'll probably be feeling it tonight for sure. In about a couple of hours, he's probably gonna go back and go, whoa, <laughs> <laughs> I get the numbers coming starting through. to come in. But well, uh, yeah, some nice scores coming in here. This is gonna match Felipe. It's going to match Felipe very closely as we look at the low and the high. One more judge to come in, and it looks like the advantage actually should go to Ethan Ewing. We'll wait for that score, and the advantage does go to Ewing, 7.33. Again, thinking about that, the, the, you know, I would have been the 6'8", getting thrown out a little bit because I felt like it was a little under, but the size of the wave, a little bigger, and the fact that he was flowing together. Let's take a look at both waves side by side for the comparison of these sevens for Ethan Ewing and Felipe Toledo.
Check this replay out, Rich. Yeah, I love these these uh, split screens. So, look, the critical nature of Felipe's turn w was better. So, uh, the opening turn, I give Felipe the nod, but it's here. Look at uh, Ethan's second turn. Like, that was the, the, the standout moment for his wave. Felipe staying horizontal, whereas Ethan, uh, it's more dynamic. It's more critical. The wave height is a little bit uh, steeper and higher as well. Uh, so Ethan gets that four-turn combination, Felipe down the line, gets the progressive element right at the end there. So uh, I really like where the judges went on it. I think so the spread I. is absolutely perfect. Yep. Uh, judges have been on point all day. Yeah, I, I just mentioned it. I saw Mikey actually as I was walking by here, one of the judges, and I just say, you mentioned you guys were nailing it. He said, hey, thank you. You know, it's been, it's been again, challenging, but we've felt like we've been uh, as, a, as a group and my, me individually as a judge he was mentioning uh, that uh, it felt good his scoring felt good and it, that's what it is we all do it yeah. right we're all sitting here scoring every way <laughs> well, talk, talk to us about the judging process the process and how many judges and the entire process yeah so we have five judges on the panel right and there's a head judge that sits over the back of it there he's a not scoring judge he just sits in the back there and the scores are put in on a on a whiteboard really first at start and then they can go through and they can look at replays sometimes they just write the scores down it's no worries the beginning of it and then you start comparing so they're going to compare a score or compare a wave they'll actually show felipe's wave and go hey where does this fit in relation to that score because that one's already in so the seven is already put in they're going to compare it and the judges are going to throw it in what they thought you know again judge one thought that 6.8 just slightly under felipe's wave and then the rest of the judges pretty much went, but it went just ever so slightly different boom 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 yeah. But it's the not, five judges get a high and a low thrown out, and then that's the average. I guess, yeah. And it's not one mine, right? It's five, five. mines up there with a, a person overseeing those five and mines at the same time. And they're orchestrating. He, they're not there influencing. He's up there orchestrating, going, okay, here's a here's your score, folks. You had the 6.8. We show it to you right here on the screen. And then now we're going to show you the next wave. Well, I, I'm sorry, Cops. I think the important thing that the head judge does is uh, he levels the judges out. And by that, I mean not letting them get caught up in, in sometimes over emotion in a score because you have to stay real it, you can get caught in the emotion but you have to be analytical about what they're doing looking at the technical features of what the, the maneuver is delivered uh, and that's how they get their score hey guys let's take a look at the career head-to-head -head stats between felipe toledo anything new it might surprise you three to Ewing, two to Toledo, Peter. A yeah, little surprise. I mean, again, very pretty even. You know, you think about their average heat scores, lower on Ethan's side, higher on, uh, on Felipe's side. The max heat score, very, very similar, right? I mean, only separated by half a point. And then you look at their high numbers, very similar. So these two have matched up yeah. very, very well. And uh, I guess it's just fitting that we're going to see them in the title match. Yeah, and look at how tight the heat is <laughs> just from the get-go. <laughs> just from the opening exchange, we're talking about three tenths of a point differentiation Pete. yeah it, it, and again it's it's you know five judges and that's the averages come out it's a 0.33 which really it's pretty even i mean that's how it felt like when you watch those waves side by side you could say that and i'm sure someone would argue hey no i like uh, ethan's way better because he had the string of it. you know again that's why we have five judges rich i like what you said at the beginning of this title match for ethan ewing don't change what you're doing yeah. and it looks like he is sticking to the same playbook right now yeah it's the worst thing you can do because it's, you know, he's, he's done so well the way he's going at the moment. He knows he's got the judges' favor with some of the maneuvers he's doing. He's laying it down. He's got the formula sorted out, and he's got a flow and a rhythm of the day. Uh, you know, you, you can't, if you try and surf up, you, that's when you start pushing yourself out of your zone and you start making mistakes. Making mistakes and, yeah. You know, he's on right now. Well, and, and the obvious, though, too, is it helps that you know, the surfing that he's doing right now is getting producing nines and eights, yeah. right? Yeah, well, rise up San Clemente because there's so much talent here in this town and the pride of this town. Griffin Colapinto, number three in the world. AJ caught up with Griffin earlier today. Griffin, you have worked so hard for this opportunity to come out here and surf for a shot at a world title. I know you would have loved to go a little bit further, but after dreaming of it for so many years, how did this moment, seeing the red all over the beach, live up to the dream? Definitely went beyond my dreams. I didn't even think about it in that way. Like running out for that heat, just everyone was like yelling, screaming. I was like, felt like I was feeling like this vibration like going into me. And I just kind of like, I had this moment where I kind of just like put my head back and like embraced it and just, oh, I felt so good. I just like had a little giggle and I don't know, it's these, these fans, San Clemente, I, thank you everyone for coming out today. It's freaking it, the most insane moment of my life. I never even thought I'd have an opportunity like this, really. So 
um, yeah, I'm really happy on the way I was able to just, you know, still put on a show, still put up some good scores, and Ethan surfed super good too, and he just got me, and that's just how it goes, but yeah, I don't know, I just, I'm really happy with the way the day has gone, and like, I've, I've had so much fun in this whole process, so, you know, I wouldn't change a thing, and yeah, I really trust that everything happens for a reason, and I'm only 25, and just getting started, so let's do this. Just getting started. We'll see you next year. Congratulations, Griff. All right, thank you. Griffin Colapinto, Felipe Toledo, wave number two in this title match. Razor sharp on the first carve. Double pump off the bottom, throws it out there, stomps it into the flats, stands up. Oh, man. Ewing behind him with a fierce first carve, comes around this corner, layback, power, hack. What? How is this exchange once again, Peter Miller? Oh, giggling. I am. I'm living. How can you not enjoy this? I mean, literally, that's what we are here for. And these two are going head to head, battling it out, and that was awesome. Now it's going to be the race for the Red Bull jet skis. You can see Felipe Toledo right on the back, real quickly. Rich. Talk us through this week. Wow, this first opening carve to, like, I mean, it's just sizzling, you know. He's just <laughs> turbo boost through that. And then just throws the giant air reverse, full rotation. And uh, whenever you see Felipe stand tall like that, you know he's absolutely stoked in it. But this opening carve, look at the extension of the upper body. Gets the wings right out. Uh, that up, you know, the upper body just leading the, the lower body gets centered again, pumping down the line, hits the lip absolutely perfectly, already starting the rotation as he launches. And uh, yeah, well, it was just about a 360 degree rotation. It was probably about 340, but uh, incredible maneuvers. Yeah, and standing proud for the finish, Felipe Toledo will wait for that number. Take a look here, Pete. Ethan Ewing on the rail. How cooking is the waves? It just has smoothed out. It's just butter, and these guys are going ballistic. That was a beautiful two-turn combo. I and mean, there was progression in that style of move for Ethan Ewing, especially at the closeout where he picks that. As we see, this is the judge's angle here. But look at this underneath turn. Ah, just, uh, you know, again, giggles coming flying out of me. How could you not? Finn's skipping out on that first turn. So powerful from Ethan Ewing. So we're waiting for how this exchange turns out. We get to analyze this now, Rich, in slow motion. Just, uh, you know, gets those fins free. Just gets all that release at uh, the, the fourth quarter of the turn. And again, this is the one where he goes to the layback hack, just jamming it around that pivot point. The tail of the board's pointing towards the beach at that stage. And then he somehow just wrangles it ar around back under his feet again. Uh, look, the okay, now let's put a critical uh, eye on this now. So Ethan's maneuvers, as amazing as they were, were fairly similar in, in what they were, whereas Philippe's were totally different. Yep. Had the big gaff at the start and then the big air rev, so total variation. So how would you even go, and we're going to see numbers here, but I mean, is there in relation to, you know, is it a full point or is it a half point? Is it a point and a half? Um, <laughs> I'm calling it's probably a, a point. Well, it's a nine-point ride for Felipe Toledo. We're going to get to that score. Felipe Toledo goes excellent. We're waiting for the score for Ethan Ewing. And remember, for Ethan Ewing, in the context of this, you guys, a week ago, we didn't know if Ethan Ewing was even going to show up to, to this event and be able to surf. Yeah, no, it's incredible. Yeah, and I, I would agree with you, Rich. I think there's a you know, full point difference in the two. I mean, amazing, excellent surfing again by Ethan. Yeah. But again, that element with the, you know, we haven't seen it all day. You know, the big air rev re at the end as well as his carve on the outside was pretty darn dynamic as well yeah yeah you'd have to you'd have to think that felipe was watching this going okay here's here's what i'm going to do here's how i'm going to change things up and beat this guy scores so coming in again you guys and pretty close. For Ethan Ewing, and it's going to wow. be close. Okay. 8.5 for Ewing. So Toledo with a slight advantage over Ethan Ewing in that last exchange. Yeah, and only half, half point. point. Yeah, half point. I mean, and again, judges taking a look at that. They're watching it all. They've been t scoring all day long. Um, and uh, again, Ethan's been getting scored very, very well, and he deserves it because, you know, even though he's not doing that quote unquote progressive above the lip style of surfing, he is doing very progressive rail work. <laughs> yeah. He's, he's kind of laying down a, a new category. It's progressive power surfing, if you want to call it something. It is. You know, yeah, no, it exactly is. what it is. I mean, yeah, I mean, it was though, this style of surfing and power surfing has never been done before. Yeah. Well, it is a tight race in this title match. Heat number one, almost neck and neck title match. Heat number one between Felipe Toledo, Ethan Ewing. Here we go with Toledo.
Winds up off the bottom. On fire on the rail, on fire in the air. Toledo one more time. And incomplete. That's not going to change the situation. I'm Kuiper Girl with, along with Peter Mel and former event champ Richie Lovett. So we still got a tight race, Rich, between uh, Ethan Ewing and Felipe Toledo. Yeah, like healthy heat scores. 16 points, V15, 8-3, so not a lot in it. But, uh, you know, these lads are just laying down some huge numbers and uh, really pushing each other, which is great to see. This is exactly how we wanted these title matches to go down. And, uh, wow, well, what a treat for surf fans around the world and for everyone down here at Lowe's. Well, let's take a look, you guys, at, for the men, the top scores of today. And it's a story, really, about <laughs> exactly this title <laughs> match. 8.6, 8.93, nine-point ride for Ethan Ewing. Felipe Toledo, though, just to put things into perspective, Pete, is on the top of the list on his second ride today, already on the top of the list. Yeah, and we touted him as the guy. I mean, we, we know that he's been able to produce uh, this type of surfing here at Trestles, and he's not going to go out here and disappoint. He knew exactly what he needed to do to come here in top form. You know, where he when he showed up, I did hear him show up at the beach. It was like literally like the last heat of the, of the you know, of the before the title match and you heard when he showed up on the beach the whole crowd lit up you know Felipe! it was crazy so uh he, t he did not come down here early he was i mean probably didn't even really watch <laughs> much i would think don't know for sure but rich talk to me about endurance and fatigue uh because this was uh ethan surfed 13 waves right this is only felipe toledo's fourth wave ridden with toledo again Lots of control on the rail of the sharp eye. Throws it up, puts it down, spins it around, and he's got more. Skips that section, but power, full slash, and talk about the slash here. Ethan Ewing with a couple of slashes of his own, and we come to the end of Ethan's ride. Again, an incredible exchange, Rich. Uh, this is just, uh, this is surfing at its best. And uh, a real treat for everyone here. Felipe is uh, really starting to heat up. And uh, Ethan Ewing, man, he's just taking the punches and he keeps punching, he keeps punching back, you know? Yeah. And it's, uh, we need to see Ethan's uh, wave so we can really uh, get a look at it from the start. But uh, Felipe, you know, Here's you, the just can't, you just can't deny. It's so much variety, Pete. Yeah, well, look at it. I mean, again, back out to the car. The release comes out of it. No worries. Into another beautiful section. A little bit different angle in the approach. And again, a big layback snap to finish. And somehow was able to climb that whitewater and get a finish for a fourth move. A little bigger wave here for Felipe. Yeah, Ethan's wave held its height the whole way down. So projection maneuver to start things off. A big opening carve back into the power pocket for Felipe. Now he gets that progressive turn. Big out of the lip rotation bringing it down the line, and then a layback hack to finish off, and then the flex. Wow, again, comparison-wise, I mean, uh, they're different styles of waves, but I mean, the progressive element from Felipe on the outside section, the beautiful arcing car, but, but that wave was kind of turned out the channel a little bit, so it wasn't as steep on the face as we saw from Ethan Ewing's, but this turn here, just beautiful, up and over, the nose pick, and he comes out so clean. It's like, you to get your board off balance? No, no worries for him. His footwork, impeccable. Be able to get back on his board and go straight into another car. He was actually readjusting his feet before he'd actually even set the line back on the board again. And, you know, that's just, it's instinctual for him. Yeah. It's not something that you can, you can really practice too much. Or, Jump rope, or, maybe. Yeah, well, maybe. <laughs> so, Rich, I was, I was talking about, you know, the endurance and fatigue that may be happening with yeah. Ethan Ewing at this moment. He's ridden 14 waves so far today. At what point do you think the fatigue and the endurance is going to become a factor? Well, you know, perhaps right now. Um, look, he still looks like he has energy on the wave. He still looks like he's he, he's got a, a full tank of gas. Um, and, but, you know, let's just see what happens here. It, he's going to have to really push himself to the absolute limit if he wants to take down Felipe here. Um, but you're right, you know, it, you can't deny the fact that he's been in the water all day long. And generally what I feel like fatigue ends up being falls, right? Where mistakes, yeah. that's generally where you don't really see it necessarily in the performance, but just with it again, I mean, I guess it is performance, but the falls, like all of a sudden you make a mistake, you know, just a little mistake because that's where the fatigue comes in. So we're really waiting for scores for Toledo, scores for Ewing, and let's compare the last waves ridden for both of our competitors as we're waiting for these scores. Break it down, Rich. Uh, okay, so look, Ethan Ewing just jams that opening turn, much more acute with the angle, the pivot 
was much tighter. Felipe was swooping. Ethan straight back up again. And, uh, well, Felipe, a totally different manoeuvre there. Air rotation. What these guys are both doing is getting off the top and off the bottom really well, getting into the transition really quickly. And by that, I mean heel side, toe side rail. That transition between the two, it's so smooth and it's seamless. It's done just so quickly. And uh, both these guys exceptional at it. Gosh, well, a little bit of a slight advantage to Felipe Toledo. Here's the number from that last one coming on the replay, an 8.97 for Felipe Toledo. Ethan Ewing not far behind him on the comparison on that exchange. Ethan Ewing, his score, excellent again, an 8.73. Talk about a tight heat. Yeah, it's very tight. And again, I like what the judges did here because, uh, again, I think the progressive element that Felipe brought, we haven't seen that today. That was a part to kind of lift it to, in my eyes. Even though know that Ethan Ewing is able to combo his moves on the outside. Uh, much quicker in his transitions, uh, but they gave him and rewarded him a good number, 8.73. Yeah, progression and variety, you'd have to say, is is working out to be the difference in this heat so far. Uh, you were saying that he's ridden 14 waves, Kaipo. 15 now. 15 now. That's 15 waves that the judges have watched him today versus watching fresh eyes on Felipe. They're only human, right? And they've seen... They've seen, even though Ethan's bringing variety into what he's doing to that one particular maneuver, they're seeing it. They've seen it. Yeah. Over and over again yeah. today. So, yeah. um, how could they not get swept up in what Felipe's doing? And right. in that last exchange, Peter, with a panel of five judges, one judge actually did give Ethan the nod, an 8.9 over 8.7 for Felipe Toledo. That's yeah. why you have five heads up there. Yeah, if that, exactly, right? And then again, that just goes to show that the inflator, there's really truly isn't, uh, they get to do their own thing up there. They get the, get the, the comparisons. And that was where the head judge is going, hey, you know, we're going to give you comparisons, you know? Let's do that like this. And they get to make their own choices. And then there's, the scores go into the computer screen, and that's how you see it. So it's uh, five judges, high and low thrown out. They average the next three together. And it is a, I mean, they, easily could say, you know, hey, Ethan Ewing has been, you know, could be almost winning this heat, but I mean, it's literally separated by a half a point. Yeah, there's nothing in it. But look at the titles, they're huge. <laughs> those half a points, Rich, sneak up on you because look at the need for Ethan Ewing. He needs the highest single wave score. He needs a 9.24 to take this match. Yeah, and uh, well, that'd be something special for today. You know, that's taking it even further than what he's done uh, all, all morning. So uh, he's gonna have to wait for that special wave now. And I think with six minutes to go, uh, with second priority, there's a there's a formula to what he needs to do here. He yeah. needs to wrangle priority back off Felipe and then wait for that special wave. And hope that that wrangling doesn't allow Felipe to get another number. Yeah. <laughs> right? That, 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 considering what Felipe's already been able to do. M Mitchell uh, Salazar, what do you think about this neck and neck title match number one between Ethan and Felipe Toledo? Well, it's extremely tight, and as you guys were mentioning, I actually think it's it's spot on because Look at the amount of separation between the scores, a 9, an 8.97, an 8.73, and an 8.5. I mean, they're splitting hairs right now upstairs, but I just think it's the element of innovation by Felipe Toledo that's giving him the edge over Ethan Ewing. You guys were mentioning the repetition that we've seen from Ethan Ewing in his surfing so far today. He's still been perfect, though. 17.23 heat total. He's won every match so far up until this point of the day but I really want to point out that if it weren't for that opening exchange and Ethan Ewing getting the better of it I don't think Felipe would have been pushed to a point like that where he was net needing those nines and the high eights like he's having like he's having right now we still have five minutes out there boys and we got a set in coming set coming in decision time for Toledo he's holding the lead and priority over Ethan Ewing you see the paddle for the two surfers Ewing ducks under the white water unable to get to the shoulder good idea too that way he didn't have much on offer another uh, set number two coming through here, and Toledo will hold court with the lead and priority, Rich. Yeah, you could see Ethan was actually having a look at it and trying to trying to actually coach uh, Felipe into into having a look as well. But Felipe just didn't want any any piece of it. And just to extend on what what Mitch was saying too, there, you know, Felipe's got this incredible ability to just leave a little bit in the tank and draw on what he needs to draw at a certain moment. You know, he's he's not just showing his aces. He's showing a couple of kings, queens, jacks, and I got ten in there as well. He's like, still got a couple of aces up. And then all of a sudden, they're all suited. Royal yeah. flush. <laughs> Royal flush. There it is. Well, it's just an illustration of what we're seeing right now in this title match number one of what we predicted coming into this WSL finals and how hard 
is it going to be to beat Felipe Toledo? Yeah, and it's, I mean, it's literally because he has it all, right? I mean, it, whether it's backhand, whether it's forehand, he's got the errors both on lock. He's had a 10-point error on a right, a 10-point error on a left. He's got uh, all the carves and the transitions and the speed, and uh, he's got a huge arsenal. I mean, the only thing he's lacking, and we have all pointed it out, is the fact that, you know, Pipeline and Chopo are his Achilles heel, and he's got to be able to get better there. And he is so talented, you know he can do it. It's just a matter of getting over that reef a little bit more. All right, well, three and a half minutes, Toledo with heat control, a lead over Ethan Ewing, and holding priority 77. That's the crew right there cheering on Toledo, Rich. Yeah, it's uh, a big crowd down there. The Brazilians are out in force. They're a very vocal group, too. I mean, uh, uh, literally, they are, you know, just loving every minute of this. Sport is huge in their nation, and uh, they know how to celebrate sport. They know how to cheer on their fans, or as fans. Uh, so, again, I mean, I, Felipe is just tapping into that. Checking out a preparation title match number two for the women. We have Carissa Moore and Caroline Marks coming in. And Carissa getting some moral support. Mitchell Ross, her coach and advisor, sending her into that title match number two. Peter. Good vibes, good energy between those two. I've been yeah. talking to Mitch a lot in the lead up here, and he just said Riss has been uh, so dialed in with all her boards. She's been working hard. She's gone through a huge quiver just to pick out the little magic sticks, and uh, everything's been right. The lead up to her title campaign has kind of been perfect. You yeah. know? So, um, and all that work is done previous, right? Yeah. And now at this point, now that's the, you know, Mitchell is here as a, you know, a big teddy bear, right? Just to kind of give, I mean, he saw right there, right? Some warmth and some, some yeah. support. And that's really, because she has the talent. Yeah. I mean, at this point, like you said, yeah. all the work's been done. Yeah. You just need that comfort zone, yeah. right? And, uh, you know, having hubby here and Mitch, it's great. You know, and of course, there's some tidbits of info that are going there, of course, right? Yeah. Uh, it's there just a little, little analytical, you know, tidbits on the day. Yeah. And, you know, perhaps just watch this or that or positioning in the lineup, whatever it may be. Um, but yeah, you're right. They're not they're not working on anything right no. now. But no. it's interesting in this two out of three matchup in that you're going to surf against the same person. So the downloads after the heat, it's not like you're moving into another round with a different opponent. Yeah. You can actually look at, hey, that was the strength of that person. This is the weakness. So it is unique for this two out of three format. And I will say that basically Caroline had the better waves in that one, right? It literally was hands down. She was on yeah. the best wave. So now Carissa needs to find a way to get the better of that rhythm. Take that rhythm away from Caroline. She's had it now for two two heats yeah and that would be part of the download right yeah. so keen eye uh, by peter mel carissa moore in the two box right now getting ready felipe toledo with priority is going to let ethan ewing go ethan needs a 9.24 double e big slash there no section to follow however just that one maneuver by itself was just so incredible you know and uh uh, well, then, yeah, I was down in the uh, in the competitors area before, and it was just packed with you know every, the who's who of the the surfing industry yeah. and shapers and Piles and Pizel was down there, Brit Merrick, all the crew, everyone's coaches were down there, and every time a surfer does something incredible, yep. they're just screaming and you know hooting and hollering because they just appreciate what's going on here and, and this heat in particular i feel like it's competitive surfing and it's absolute best yeah it is absolute best and uh you know everyone's emotionally i mean i got texts from dino and dino here he's like you know he had his opinion on how this split was he <laughs> felt like it was, a, it was a point and a half difference for felipe over ethan ewing but that's it we're all invested in this because we love good surfing and we love the comparisons that are happening that was weird yeah he oh, just no, closed it out okay got it <laughs> there you go so no he, yeah he had a priority he had the lead he just closed out the heat a little bit of defense that's high heat IQ for Felipe Toledo. He's going to take the lead, winning title match number one, heat one. Look at those numbers, though, for both surfers. Both surfers going excellent in this one. It's epic. That is what we are here for in the title match, to see this style and this approach of surfing. And we still get to see another heat. Yeah, how good is that? Let's take a look at our men's uh, brackets 